Hi, Kirwana. Welcome to Orlando. <laughs> hello. Hello, Scott. How is it there in Orlando? Thank you for having oh me. I don't know if you can see. I'm so sweaty. It's so humid here, but I love it at the same time. Right. Uh, I think you just time traveled from another session that was like right around the corner to hang up on that team's call to then come join us on this team's call. Yes, that is absolutely true. I was teaching adoption best practices for modern work, and that was very fun after my keynote this morning. So I am busily hopping around the conference right here from the comfort of my home in Seattle, Washington. Nice. Well, we decided to step out into the hallway, so you're going to hear a little bit of background noise, but we're just right around the corner from where you were with the rest of the attendees. So we appreciate you joining us. Uh, so on the agenda today, we just have an interview to sort of get to know you better and then figure out what we can uh, do with developers on uh, some of your content. So let's uh, learn a little bit more about yourself first. Tell us who you are. There's obviously a new audience than what you just came from. So uh, right. let's hear that. Okay, no problem. Well, it's great to be with everyone. I'm Kara Wanigatimu, and I am the principal manager of the customer advocacy group in Microsoft Teams Engineering. And I have the privilege of working across Microsoft 365, driving adoption, releasing cool tools, uh, coming and educating customers about how to get the most value um, from Microsoft 365. And I have a definite place in my heart for the developer community. Um, I am a, a developer by trade. I, I don't get to do it nearly as much as I used to. Um, and I have a real, real love for the low code, no code entry point that we're really focusing on in modern work right now. And so there's a lot of fun things happening uh, in the developer space, but across Microsoft 365. So I get to do all that good stuff. Yeah. There is a ton of space. So for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Scott Kate. I'm live in Orlando with Learn TV. We will be answering some questions if you have inside the chat on Learn TV. So uh, please let me or Kirwana know. I'll be monitoring those and we'll see if we can answer them along the way. Uh, but similar to you, I have a developer background, uh, but I don't have as much of the integration stories uh, as a background that we're going to talk about today. So I hope to both educate myself with some questions. Hopefully I don't embarrass myself asking you things I'm supposed to already know. And then uh, really bring a, a developer perspective. You know, I'm familiar with Azure. I know what app service is. I know how to deploy apps and sort of write my own code. But that's where I manage everything. I've dabbled a little bit with logic apps, but I haven't done anything with Teams and some of the great things that I've seen you talk about with like the interactive cards and, you know, how to get started with that. So I'm really excited to go down that road. That's good. And you know something, this is for you and the audience at large. There are no dumb questions because I tell you, I do this every day and it's really difficult to keep up with all the new things that we're releasing. And so, um, you know, that's really the purpose of like Learn TV and also our community so that people can come and keep asking questions because every time you find a new scenario you want to improve with something like adaptive cards, like I'm going to talk about today, right. you're going to come up with some questions for sure. Yeah. And because I haven't done it before, I sort of feel a little exposed. Like, <laughs> yes, like, it's I'm not, the, I'm not the yeah, I'm not the expert <laughs> you are. So uh, I'm here to learn. So with with all of that, uh, what is sort of the you know one of your favorite developer things that you're working on? Where do you want to take us today? Oh, I want to take you to something that we call the Extensibility Lookbook. And this is a fantastic place to start, especially if you're new, and how to think about changing your business processes and your apps, especially using Microsoft Teams. And so this is on adoption.microsoft.com. My team and I run this, and we really bring together tools for developers and business users and IT professionals to get more out of Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365. And so the idea here with this gallery is to give you inspiration. And that's really the theme of our site, inspiration to execution. You hear a lot of cool things at Microsoft, but how do you actually do them, right? We right. want to make sure that you've got those snippets that are available. These are, these are great to fire some cylinders to let me start thinking about what's possible. You know what the hardest thing for me is starting from a blank slate. It's always yeah. easier for me to look at what somebody else has done and then uh, either learn from that or or even, you know, stack overflow, copy, paste, and then adapt yeah. to the problems I'm trying to solve. So having these online, I'm actually sharing the, the same screen with you. Um, so let's go through a few of these. 
Yeah, they're really great. And so we've organized them in three ways by product, by the kind of experience that you want to change documents or conversations or whatever, and by various scenarios aligned to business processes. And so well, however you're coming to this, you know, whatever way you may be coming to it um, is is really important. I'm going to go back to products for a minute and because I want to go into something that you may have heard about a lot at Microsoft Build, and that's adaptive cards. So adaptive cards are essentially um, have been around for a while, but we're continuing to invest in the way that they work across different workloads and operating systems. And from here, you'll be able to see some examples of how adaptive cards work. But even more important is getting to the sample gallery. The sample gallery is super important and it actually goes through another site that's called adaptivecards.io. Um, and this is a great getting started site. And this getting started site gives you all of the versions, the visuals about you know, how these things work. And up here at the top, it takes you right to the sample gallery. And I love this sample gallery because the sample gallery will show me all the examples of the types of adaptive cards that I can build, right? right? And it actually shows me the code and I can try it myself, right? So this food so order one is pretty fun. Already right at home here, I can see there's some JSON. I can start to feel the idea that somewhere there's a server, whether that's serverless or logic apps or even my own server, Somewhere we're asking questions back and forth, and this is sort of the payload that's being transmitted like across the wire, and then it's being rendered as that adaptive card inside some other client, like a text message or Outlook or something. Exactly, and that's a really important point, Scott, because you're going to leave the rendering to the client application. You're not going to have to deal with that portion of it because whether your user is looking at it in Outlook or Teams or, as you said, a text message or embedded on a website, right. Light that mode or dark mode, yeah, whatever that that experience will handle the rendering, and you are basically focused on the actual interaction and the experience. So, I was talking about this earlier today in my keynote. And, you know, some things really come to mind really easily. Like, obviously, there's things like food orders um, or weather controls and what have you, or even expense reports that you can do. Yeah. But there's also things like DevOps scenarios. You know, what if it was an adaptive card that was alerting you about an event on Azure, that there was a, an interruption of service or a degradation of service? Or mm -hmm. that a customer had, you know, uh, in, uh, interacted and said that there was a service issue, right? The most important yeah. thing I ever did as an engineer, as a service engineer, was know when there was a problem a and statement. fix it. <laughs> what did you say, Scott? That's a big statement. Are you sure that's the most important thing? Well, it, actually, yeah, because I need to know if there's a problem so I can fix it. Before my bosses do. <laughs> Maybe the most important thing was I learned how to live on coffee. I'm not sure. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you know, I've built some of these really big apps. And as you build a big software app, you've got the right architecture so that you know uh, how to deploy and maintain the app. But then there are all these little popcorn features, like little yeah. features that are off to the side. And I sort of imagine how could I let the user interact with just that little popcorn feature? without having to actually be in the app. Yes. Uh, like, but, but somewhere, and this is where I'm asking a question back to you, somewhere there's like identity. And the, you know, the person interacting with this card has to be the person that's interacting with the app. So how, how does that talk to each other? Well, the, the authentication process, again, is handled by the client. So the, the, the right. right. So the client is actually handling all the complications that identity brings to us as developers. And another thing yeah. I want to call out to anybody who's new, right? Maybe you're new to this space. This might be the first time you're watching Learn TV. This is a great place for new developers or low code, no code developers to get started. You can start to get comfortable with what, J what JSON looks like. You can start to understand how to read code like this. It doesn't have to be intimidating. Like some of the other things can feel really intense um, to yes. get started with, but this is a great place to do it. And we have new templating that allows you to create templates for these types of cards so that then you can reuse them in different scenarios. Um, that was just updated in May. And so if you have been using them for a while, you should check out the updates because the binding method has changed a little bit. 
But nonetheless, okay. the template idea is really important. And really think about the kind of um, changes you can make. If you get some feedback from your users that they don't know how to order a new headset, you could start with this food order adaptive card, change the language. Yeah. And you can try it yourself right here on the web and change the language and see how they could order a headset or a new laptop or something and show that to them in a chat and teams and off you go. I love that. Try yourself. I'm actually cruising through there. I don't know if you can see. Look at you. Like of course uh, you are. There's one on the side and you can sort of see an agenda like a bus stop and you go from Redmond to Bellevue to Seattle and you can do stops. So, I mean, these cards are much more flexible. Like, I have to admit, when I started Adaptive Card, I'm thinking, how can I ask the user some yes, no questions? Like, right. is is this good? Or are you going to approve this? Or, right. you know, are you going to be on time types of questions? Uh, but this is much more rich than that. Oh, yes, absolutely. And it's just the beginning. And so also you can think of Adaptive Cards as they connect to the Power Platform. So think about taking the responses from an adaptive card and kicking off a workflow in your organization. And this is the thing that gets me so excited, right? I'm a business yes. process engineer. That's what I've done forever. I really love to be able to automate processes and structure data. And also then I can control identity and access and analysis of that data. And that really gets me up in the morning. Yeah. I get excited about it. So if you How take- yeah, you take that response from that adaptive card, do something with it, right? I mean, certainly you can do that one little thing, but think more broadly once you have Power Platform involved, the kinds of further actions that you could do with that data. Right. Yeah, I've done a little bit with Power Flow, and now yeah. the gears are starting to turn, and I can imagine, you know, I might be able to do some of these popcorn features of my app without actually even touching my app because I can fire off either an Azure function or something in PowerFlow yes. or, or maybe vice, uh, vice versa, those two can sort of work in tandem. Yeah. Um, and so the one thing that I did in PowerFlow was uh, automatically create some calendar appointments based mm -hmm. on uh, meetings that we're doing. You know, Learn TV has all these meetings all over the place and we've got people all over the world like yourself dialing in. Uh, and so, you know, automating that calendar appointment the beautiful part was I didn't have to actually deploy any services. I did 100% of everything right through the, the portal. Uh, Absolutely. So super excited about that and how these cards. Now, you mentioned also that the card renders inside the client. My head goes to Outlook because I get a lot of email. And inside Microsoft, we have the ability to approve expense reports now. In the old days, it would say, you know, do you approve this expense report? You click a link, you go to a website, you log in, you see the details, and you click approve. Yeah. And now, right inside my email, I just say, approve. Like, it's one button, and then inside the email body, you get the little spinner, and then it just says approved. So I wonder where er where else uh, are these cards? Well, basically, they can be anywhere that you want to put them, but certainly in Outlook, certainly in Microsoft Teams, certainly on the web. Um, and think about what that means from a mobile experience. Right. Yes, of course, on your desktop, you can go and interact with that adaptive card um, inside the Outlook client. But you could also be using OA, you know, Outlook on the web. You could be using yeah. Outlook on your mobile device. And it's really important to think about enabling frontline workers um, with these kinds of capabilities. There's many people in our organizations that never sit at a desk. They don't have right. that experience. They're not information workers. So you want to be able to extend your capabilities into the hands of the mobile device that you that that employee has. Here's another thing I want you to think about. What if you um, work for an insurance company and you're um, an adjuster and you want to go out into the field and take pictures based on a claim a customer has done? You can use an oh. adaptive card to take that media and send it back into the office and attach it to that claim record. Right. So I was thinking adaptive card is really just, you know, elementary input of, of buttons, yes or no, but you're saying I could do a whole bunch of more data collection with the adaptive yes. card. A hundred percent I am. And then I'm also saying that once that happens, then you have PowerFlow do other work to it based on the information that you get. And so this really transcends the ability of what you're doing in the client. And if you put it together for, for some of the other extensibility capabilities we have, think about telehealth. Like what you mentioned earlier yeah. about Learn TV scheduling, for me, is a telehealth scenario. 
right? I have doctors right. who need to schedule automatic appointments. They also want video and chat services in a branded experience. I can use the extensibility components and adaptive cards and other things to build that experience, right? And so you're not limited by the user having the client. The capabilities can come outside the client and live in third-party applications that are custom developed for industry and business scenarios. And again, like this is the yeah. thing that gets me up in the morning. Like this, people think right. that I just love the adoption, but I actually love building this stuff because it's so much fun and it's very creative. To me, it's creative to be able to think of how to do this stuff. It's super creative because you're really only limited by your own imagination. And the thing that I'm most excited about, particularly with the work that I've done in the, the Flow Engine, is I don't have to host any of the servers. Yes. And so what that means is, like, I, and there's still a CI CD pipeline, so I can still store some of that really advanced logic inside GitHub and then deploy it, but I don't have to do that. I can actually just use the portal and, uh, and, and get a, a really uh, long distance towards the solutions that I'm trying to build for. So let me ask you this. You talk to people all over the world. What's one of the more exciting use cases with these adaptive cards that you've seen where you had like an aha moment, like, Oh, I didn't actually, I didn't think we could, we would do that. Or, you know, somebody who's doing something uh, in the field or on, on the road in mobile or something else. Can you think of anything there quick? Oh, yeah, I can think of a lot of things. You know, I had the pleasure of being the lead of our COVID response team during this oh. pandemic for Microsoft Teams. And I'm not necessarily the natural person to think of taking that role, but I have a lot of experience in emergency management and, and I'm really good with modern work tools. And so I kind of ended up being that person. Um, and I had the privilege of watching people use our technology to do really important work in ways I never would have thought we did it. Um, and so much of the innovation came from outside Microsoft in the partner community, individual developers in different companies doing things to get supplies to people, understand what was happening out on the ground, um, you know, mobile hospital deployment, and now, of course, COVID vaccines. Right. And so, you know, while I think of these tools in very business-centered ways, um, there is absolutely no doubt that when uh, things are really important, like who's getting the COVID vaccine and who isn't, um, or being able yeah. to, to gather data from people in your community about the impact of a variety of kinds of things. Because remember, COVID isn't the only thing we've been dealing with. There's been other types of natural disasters and other issues around the world. Totally. And so gathering data from your the people in your community is really important. And so I've been really blown away with how creative people have gotten and being able to hear the voice of their constituents in a particular community by using these tools. Um, and That's the fact great. that they're available across Android and iOS and Windows and Linux, I mean, it, it's just, it really democratizes your ability to get data. Yeah. Okay, well, we've got a few minutes left. I just did a search for developer program Microsoft 365. Oh, yeah. And that took me into uh, sort of how to get started. And then I didn't know that there's a developer M365 account. So, you know, I'm internal at Microsoft, so I sort of take advantage of all the things that we have available as employees. But I signed in with my uh, personal account and I actually can have a free M365 Scott Kate account and I can do everything, but I got into the fine print. Uh, it's good for 25 users, but it doesn't last forever. Right. It lasts it lasts forever if it's active. So I thought this was really good of Microsoft because you know you sort of all have these ghost accounts out there that you've set up and then forgot yeah. about. This automatically renews every 90 days if you're actively using it with developer uh, stuff. So it's not for production, but I can do all this stuff for free. It literally cost me zero dollars. That's right. It was in instant to set up. Uh, so if people are interested, that was uh, once again. Do, do you know the URL for that or? I do, on spot. Yeah, no, I just think developer.microsoft.com and you can get to the Microsoft 365 developer program from there. Um, if you do, if you but you did the right thing. Search for Microsoft 365 developer and you'll get right to that homepage. And this is really important. It's really important to make sure that you have a sandbox like that. Nobody wants to learn in production. Nobody should right. be. You want to make sure that you have a place to test everything. 
and that you feel comfortable deploying things. And and oftentimes in your own company, you're not an admin of the environment. You may not be exactly. on the Azure subscription. So you want to know how these things work. So go to developer.microsoft.com, sign up for that. And Scott, you're so right. As long as you're active, you'll get that free forever. Plus, you'll get great information from the developer program. Um, and, um, and we work really closely with them on adoption.microsoft.com to make sure you get all the information about once you build something, how you get people to use it. Because sending an email well, is not the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So many of the times we miss email or don't look at email, but a DM inside of Teams or text message, that yeah. really uh, gets my eye. So one of the things that you said earlier, since these adaptive cards can render inside Outlook and Teams, but also have a web presence, the try it now is really strong. Like I changed yeah. the zip code in the map. There's a map adaptive card and I just changed the zip code to my house. And like the map just zooms out and it shows the property on my house exactly like you'd expect it. I didn't have to install anything. I'm literally just doing it right inside the portal. Uh, so adaptive cards uh, seem like they have a, a huge future. Uh, so we just have a few minutes left here. Wanna, anything you want to close with? Well, I mean, I really want to thank you for having me on Learn TV today. I want people to get started. Go out there and visit adaptivecards.io, visit adoption.microsoft.com and our extensibility lookbook. Get inspired and then get executing. It's easier than ever to get started with this stuff. Don't let it intimidate you. If you're new, hop on in. And if you have questions, visit us in the Microsoft technical community. We are always there to help. And, you know, this is what we get to do. It's a privilege for us to be able to help folks and so and talk about these things that we're really excited about. But new technology is only as powerful as the people it's designed to help. So make mm, sure you have a solid really business strong. case for the work that you're going to do. Who are you helping? Whose experience are you improving with an adaptive card? right, or anything else that you're going to use across the Microsoft ecosystem. So always have your end users in mind and know what it is that they need and you'll you'll do great. That's great advice. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us in Orlando. Uh, I look forward to someday being inside the studio with you. To give a quick little fist bump there. Thank you to everyone in the audience of Learn TV for joining us. We'll see you next time. See you later.